Welcome to Stadium Bets, everybody, here on Stadium. Uh, we are Stadium's sports betting show for your weekend. Colby, Nate, Ben, and Monty is running the sticks. Boys, a little bittersweet because we got the NFL playoffs, but NCAA football is over. Long gone until next season. Blake Corum, two touchdowns. Michigan Wolverines. Blake Corum, two touchdowns. Michigan got the under and covered and got the team total over if you watch Sharp Tank. So, fun it was a fun season i thought we did pretty well betting wise college football uh we're focused on the playoffs for the nfl but boys just a uh, quick quick thoughts on college football season yeah i mean it was an up and down season i think in terms of the transfer portal and all the all the changings that's going on in the sports um probably gonna have to maybe reevaluate my process uh, going into next season but that's a conversation for a different time yeah bowl season was bowl season tough. was terrible yeah it was tough i will say bowl season especially the non-playoff games be very selective the only one that made yeah. sense was Missouri. Be, o- be okay with losing because there's a lot of uncertainty. Yeah. But uh, for the most part, regular season college football was fun. Hopefully you tailed us for some of our picks for the national championship and uh, the semifinal games as well. But, gentlemen, we have the NFL playoffs coming up. It's wild card weekend this weekend. We're super wild card weekend. We're super excited for it. We are going to preview every single game. We got bets for every single game. And the first block of this show, we're going to start in the AFC side of the NFL bracket, so to speak. And we'll start out with the first game of the year for the playoffs in the NFL. Browns at the Texans. Browns uh, go into this game minus two and a half, 44 and a half is your total. Nate, we'll start with you. Do you have a pick? The first playoff game of the NFL season this year. Yeah, I bet this early. I bet the over in this game. It's right now 44 and a half, which is fine. I just see a path for points for both teams. A few weeks ago, these two teams played, and it was Browns minus three in Houston, but C.J. Stroud wasn't the quarterback. It was Case Keenum starting, and then Davis Mills took over late, and the game soared over the total. And now we have C.J. Stroud healthy off a really impressive Week 18 showing where he hit that deep pass on the first play of the game and then made several key throws in the fourth quarter to lead the win for Houston. And on the Browns side, I guess you would have thought maybe they'd be like kind of under team because of how they run the ball. But with Joe Flacco, yeah. they've been definitely an over team, just the way he's throwing yeah. the ball and having a lot of success in the air. And him and Amari Cooper were absolutely lighting up the Texans secondary just three weeks ago. So I like the over here. I would probably lean Browns on the side, but because the spread is out to almost three for the Browns, and the you could have laid three with the Browns with Case Keenum starting on the other side. I feel like the number is a little bit out of whack in terms of the point spread. I know you have to upgrade the Browns, but I don't know about that much, but I do trust both offenses to score here. Yeah, you talk about them being an over team with Joe Flacco. The Browns have gone over in four of their last five games, so I don't know if that number is even caught up with that because we saw 56 point, 58 points with them last time they played each other, and we were talking about that's a pretty big cushion between the two numbers, so I'm going over 44 and a half, like uh, tailing Nate here. The game, again, in a, it's going to be on turf and a dome. The weather is going to be perfect because it's inside, so you don't have to worry about any weather conditions that some of the games have this weekend. Two good offenses, and Houston relies a lot of on explosive plays with C.J. Stroud. I think they might be able to get at least a couple of them against a pretty good Cleveland defense, but we know how good that offense has been lately, so they should expect some explosive plays, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, it's a good Cleveland defense, but specifically at home when the uh, the winds on Lake Erie are whipping and <laughs> yeah, it's really right. hard for offenses to operate. But on the road, they haven't been as good, and they've let up a lot of explosive plays this year, and you mentioned Houston can hit those. So I'm going over. Colby, what do you like? Uh, group right here. Over. Oh, you're taking the yeah. over? I mean, I, I, if I had that. a lean, I would say Three Browns, overs. but my concern is also my concern for the over is Joe Flacco has been amazing, yes, but he has nine tur- nine turnovers in five games with the Browns. That's kind of weary for a possible under, but we love shenanigans and we love the tomfoolery. We love a good ride. I actually think that helps the over because turnovers lead to short fields for the depending, Texans. Or maybe depending a, on a where it is, yeah, score. I'm thinking so of spin, like spin zone. They're both turning the ball over because young quarterback. I lean with the Browns because of Joe Flacco has done it before and has had the experience. <laughs> While we talk about the Browns being bad defensively on the road, they give up 29.6 points per game on the road. While at home, like you mentioned, 13.8. Not great on the road. Ooh, Texans give up roughly 20 points per game at home. I mean, I like the over. We love the, the over. over is a knee jerk. Yes. Yeah, we love the over. We're going over in this game. Uh, let's go up next. The uh, Peacock game of the week. So a lot dumb. of people a uh, little unhappy about that. Colby being one of them. Dolphins at the Chiefs. Spread is Chiefs minus four. Totals 44. We don't have enough time to talk about how much we hate the channel that this is on, so we'll just talk about the spread I'm fine and the with total. It. We can, I'm fine with it. You're, you're okay with well, it. Well, you're just, a peacock just guy. It's business. Yeah, well, you're, you're a peacock That's the way to guy. get people to... 
subscribe hey, to uh, a, 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 We'll talk about this later. Free, free trial, folks. Uh, Colby, we'll start with yeah. you. Chiefs minus four, total 44. What do you, what do you I'm leaning at? with the Chiefs on the spread just because they're home. They're in the cold. The Dolphins in their little soft teal jerseys. That doesn't work in the cold. <laughs> that only works in the warm. Now, we know the Dolphins. They're not good on the road. They're four and four, and those are against the spread, four and four on the road. Those wins are the Chargers, the Patriots, the Jets, and the Commanders, and those losses are the Bills, Eagles, Chiefs, and Ravens. All teams over 500. They can't beat teams over 500. I have to take the Chiefs. I know the offense has been a little fluky. The wide receivers can't catch the ball, but they're at home. Arrowhead is going to be absolutely bananas. You got to go with Mahomes. You have to. Yeah. I'm worried about the weather, too, uh, and I'm not going to pick a side, so I went with the total. I'm going under 44 in this game. Kind of like you mentioned, the Chiefs offense been a little fluky. I don't know how much I can trust Patrick Mahomes with the wide receiver core that he currently has in this situation. Maybe the wind drops in the cold weather. The wind could be a factor as well. Kansas City 23rd in the NFL in points per game over the last three games. They really haven't been producing like the Kansas City teams of old. This isn't your father's Kansas City Chiefs. I big think brother, a lot of people big could brother. say. Uh, older big brother brothers. Kansas City Chiefs. Um, the Dolphins also injury concerns on the offensive side and uh, defensive side as well. But again, I'm not concerned defensively because the Chiefs have kind of killed themselves on when they have the ball. And the cold temperatures make for tough catching. We might see a lot of running in this game, a lot of running clock. So I'm going to go under 44 in a game like this. Nate, what do you like? Yeah, I like the under as well. Combine the weather. It's a team from South Florida playing in it. It's a night game. All the injuries on the Dolphins offense where if you get, even if you get a guy like Jalen Waddle back, how effective is he going to be off a high ankle sprain yep. in that weather? And the Chiefs defense has been playing at a very high level this season. And on the other side, the Dolphins also have the, some of those injury concerns. But I do trust a defensive coordinator like Vic Fangio, who played a lot against Patrick Mahomes back when he was the head coach of the Broncos and actually was pretty good at stopping him or finding ways to at least contain him. And that was, you know, peak Patrick Mahomes with a really good uh, offense and this offense just not as good. So I expect a, a low scoring game at Arrowhead on Saturday. And in terms of the side, would have loved to make a case for the Dolphins just because I don't think much separates these two teams at full health. But just the situation of the Dolphins playing Sunday night losing the division, and then having to go on the road Saturday night in Kansas City. This is a really tough setup here for Miami. So I, I wish I you know, had, a, had an opportunity maybe to bet Miami in this playoffs. I thought I would. I thought they'd be a tough playoff team uh, to beat with their run game and, and their improving defense, but it looks like that won't be the case this year. We have a third AFC playoff game to hit on. Steelers at the Bills in what's seemingly going to be a frigid Buffalo with high winds. A little bit of snow. We'll see if the meteorologists are correct on that one. But the Bills lay in 10, 36 and a half is a spread. Nate, we'll go right back to you. Uh, it's a double digit spread in, in a wild card game. Yeah, what do you well, like when this uh, this line opened and a side total right out after the Bills beat the Dolphins to win the AFC East, I saw a total as high as 43. Jeez. And that just plummeted and it plummeted again on Monday morning. <laughs> oh, no. And it's all weather related. Also, I think just. The teams, maybe the offense is some question marks about both. Although Buffalo, I thought their offense was fine against the Dolphins. They were moving the ball. They were just turning it over or having at the end of the first half that play where Allen throws a short of the end zone and they get the running back gets tackled. So I do think Buffalo has some potential to, to score and maybe score a little bit more points than uh, what they showed this past week. And because of that, I'm going to lay with the Bills. It's minus 10 right now. Maybe see if it goes down to nine and a half, especially if there's bad weather. Maybe the total drops even it. more, and the and the Bills side go, goes right. under. Uh, it's the only side to pick it. under double yeah. digits. Yeah, I just don't think much of the Steelers at all. I mean, they were pretty much a dead team with three games to go. They're, they're turning still Mason dead. Rudolph. I mean, they were a they were a home uh, home underdog to the Cincinnati Bagels and Jake Browning just a few weeks ago, and then they were a pretty big underdog in Seattle against uh, Geno Smith and the Seahawks, and they won both those games, and then kind of got. A little bit fortunate being able to play a Ravens team that didn't have anything to play for. So don't think much of the Sears at all. It's Bills or pass. And I did put real money on the Bills. So give me Bills minus 10. All right. Yeah, I, I like it. I think that's the right side to do. I, however, am going to fade the haters, fade the line, and going over 36 and a half. Boy. Bad, bad weather be damned. Boy, no, it's not supposed to be very snowy. They said little snow. It's supposed to be kind of high gusty, gusty winds. I think that's all right, Monty. Don't. Don't look at me Monty's like that. Yeah, I'll just Monty look, is yeah, I mean, suspicious. Monty's over there pulling up the, the weather channel and trying to check me here. I, I think that <laughs> even though it's cold, there's not there's not going to be a lot of snow and wind, give or take, especially I don't think it's going to affect the Bills too much because they run the ball a lot. We talked about it last yeah. week. 60-plus percent of their snaps are, run, are, are running the ball. 
that's not going to affect it with the wind. The Steelers defense going to be without Watt. I think that's going to affect them a lot on that line of theirs. Give me the over. Rudolph and the Steelers offense has been playing better offensively. They're moving the ball a little bit better. I, I like the over the number. It's dropped a lot. It might drop a bit more, and I'm going to take it right at kickoff because I don't think it's going to keep going up over 36. So uh, if keep you like, dropping. If you like the over in this game, wait as long as possible yeah. because if there's any snow in the forecast in western New York, a lot of people will uh, want to bet under, and maybe you could go contrarian at the last second. These guys are professionals. They know how to play in bad weather. Colby? You can wait on this one, too. Uh, I'm basically going with both of you guys' bet. Just uh, Bill's Arlay? team total over. <laughs> 22 and a half. <laughs> Look at that. He's bringing us together. I, I, I'm not touching the Steelers' offense. I'm not touching yeah. them on the spread. I don't care if this number was 14. It can be higher or whatever. I'm not touching Fair. that disgusting team that shouldn't be in the playoffs. Well, let's get into the little stink. I got the stink, guys. We know the Steelers' defense. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. They're allowing roughly 18 points per game on the road this season. But who are they without, Ben? DJ Watt. Correct. And uh, in TJ Watt's career without him playing, when he's not playing, I should say, Ooh. when he's not playing, they're allowing 29.4 points per game, which is over, over the number that is set over. at this very moment. Like what, like, like Nate said, wait till Sunday. Let that number trickle down. Bills, Bills could get the Hate over by the over. Bills. Bills can get the I over I like the over themselves. a lot. We just need three touchdowns and a field goal. Or if yeah. it drops to 21. Yeah. Hey, you know what else we need? Some NFC bets. That's all coming up next on Stadium Bets. Welcome back to Stadium Bets. Just talked about some AFC playoff games. Now we go to the other side, to the NFC. We got a lot of fun matchups in that one. Uh, we'll start with the Packers at the Cowboys. Cowboys, seven in the hook. Or what they are laying, 50 and a half is the total over there in Jerry World. Colby, we'll start with you. What do you like? Uh, if I had to lean in this game, I would... St- Lean with the Cowboys, but I like the over a lot. Ooh, a I thought no bet was coming. Lot. The Cowboys are averaging in Jerry World, in Jerry's world, 37.4 points per game. They are outscoring their opponents by 21 points at home. They could go over this number by themselves, but if we get a little help from the Packers, who are averaging 25 points down the road this season, fantastic i think the packers will put up somewhat of a fight but they are going to get dog walked by the cowboys Ooh, Ooh, i, like I love the over yeah. here i like the over but i like the cowboys a little bit more i don't love the hook but i'll take the cowboys minus seven and a half on this one i bet a minus seven early uh, in the weekend and i still like them at seven and a half i think the cowboys are a good team monty again monty's just you bullying me from over there i think the cowboys i really hope i don't Monty's get packers, on this one. cowboys at home they're back to where they love to be. A little Jerry World action. What's the theme song for Jerry World? Jerry's World. Yeah, Welcome that's to Jerry's where they love World. To play. Dak Prescott feels comfortable there. Their offense feels comfortable there. I'm not convinced at all that the Packers are a good team. I know Jordan Love's progressed a little bit this season, yeah. but the Cowboys defense should be able to hold him in check. And also, you talked about the over. I do kind of like the Cowboys team total is over it? as well. Uh, I don't know. Whatever that number is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll take whatever. I'll take Cowboys over. This Cowboys team scores over in bunches and a half. I'm down. All at right. home. Yeah, right listen, I, they're, they're a good team at home. I think offensively they'll be able to hold their own and, and really move the ball well against eh, Packers defense. Joe Brady? Uh, yeah. No. Joe Brady. John Joe Barry. Joe Barry. Joe Barry. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. We'll bleep it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to throw the challenge flag on uh, Colby for uh, saying that uh, the Cowboys could go over this team total by themselves. Jerry's world. 51 does seem like a, a bridge too far. Hey, However, I do think they're going to score. It could be the Georgia TCU game. The, okay, Packers get seven. The, the <laughs> Packers are a, a respectable team. Let's let's <laughs> that's that's a little ridiculous. No, I don't respect them. I don't mind them. All right. Well, I'm going to go over 50 and a half is my bet as well. I think the Cowboys score in this game, just like Colby outlined. But I also think the Packers are going to be able to score in this game. And and if they're, even if they're down, they're going to you know push and maybe score some late garbage time points. Packers 7.2 yards per play against the Bears and didn't punt last week, but they only scored 17 points, left a lot of points on the field. I think that they can turn some of those field goals or empty uh, possessions or zero-point possessions into touchdowns. Against a Cowboys defense, it's very feast or famine. If they're not creating turnovers, you can move the ball on them. And I just also think, as as Colby said, Cowboys score a bit here. So uh, Packers defense under Joe Barry, not very good. In, in December, they had that really Brady. bad stretch against Tommy DeVito, Baker Mayfield, and Bryce Young. Last two weeks was fine, but it was against Jaron Hall and at home against Justin Fields in a tough environment. So 
think the Cowboys will be able to score against a Packers defense that isn't very good, even though they were the last two games. And Monty, the lovely producer, director extraordinaire, 30 and a half is their team total. I was wondering I like what was it. going on I like on the it. side. Yeah, he's whispering to me. Sweet nothings in my ear. AKA Sweet team nothings? Totals. Sweet team totals. Uh, let's go Rams at Lions for the NFC. Game number two, we wanted to look at Lions laying three at home. 51 and a half is the wow. total, even higher than that Cowboys game. Nate, we'll go right back to you. And I think we all love a similar thing in this one. Yeah, how can you not like the Rams here? Rams plus three. I know we all, day, on a, on Sunday, once this matchup was set, we uh, we're very adamant about uh, betting on the Rams. I'm surprised Monty doesn't a- agree with this one. Um, Monty's but, weird. Yeah. Don't <laughs> Monty keeps giving us a look. I know, he's, he's like, you. He, I guess college football's over, so he's uh, yeah, he's, he's scared he's of good offense. Go his opinion as an Iowa fan, good offenses scare him. Anyway, I just don't think much separates these two teams. The Rams are playing really well. I don't think the Lions are good at all. Their defense is a complete fraud. Rams with Stafford back in Detroit and having Cup and Nakua and Kyron Williams. I feel like there's a lot of weapons there. And then you have Sean McVay against against Dan Campbell. I'd give the edge in the coaching to the Rams just because it's a coach who's been there against a coach who at times seems a little in over his head. And then on the other side, maybe the Lions offense could score, but which coach in the NFL knows more about Jared Goff? And then Sean McVay and the some of the coaches on the Rams side. True. So I feel like they know his tendencies. They know they traded Stafford because they didn't think Goff could take him to the next level. And now we're in a playoff game, and that's awesome to see. And I just feel like the Rams are going to be able to slow down the Lions offense just enough in a high-scoring game, and then they're going to be able to score when they want. I like it. I'm going to have a little bit more, and I think you as well, on the Rams in the uh, later segment of the show. But it's a good Rams team, Nate, and we'll talk about some of the reasons why, but this has been a good Rams team as of late. They're coming into their own. They do have to travel, but it's, again, in a dome, similar situation that they play in at home. You know, they're not really going to have to struggle with weather issues or anything like that. They're a fully healthy team, and I think they have the uh, the upper hand in the coaching area. So I'm going to take the Rams at plus three. Took them at plus four earlier in the week. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but Colby, we'll, uh, we'll go to you for this one. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm really excited for this game. The atmosphere in Detroit is going to be absolutely amazing. I've wanted the Lions to be good my whole life because they stink and they've been horrendous their entire existence. We're taking the Rams here. I'm, I'm with the boys. Um, reason number one, Amon Ross St. Brown dyed his hair blue yesterday. Dude, <laughs> number dude's, one. Number one dude's not even worried about the game. He's worried about the just making a statement with his hair. Dude, focus on the game. Come on now. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Lions, Did you turn 50? The Lions, Did somebody 50 years old? Talk. Yes. Oh, I meant, I meant to say this before I said that. Uh, this is your uh, uncle's hot take of the day. There we go. There we go. Uh, don't dye your hair before a win. <laughs> Uh, the Lions have looked terrible down the stretch. They look terrible. They barely get by with wins here and there. They yeah. don't look good. I cannot I cannot ride with them. Give me the Rams. I have to take the Rams. Let's go Stafford. I like it. All right, the final NFC game that we wanted to talk about is the Monday night game. Eagles travel to Tampa Bay. They're still a, a way favorite, a road, a road favorite. 43 and a half is the total. Colby will go right back to you. Uh, an interesting Monday night football yeah. game. The Eagles uh been getting a little bit of money. Went from like minus one and a half, now minus three. A little bit of movement in their direction. Yeah, but I'm going to go with the really gritty team here. I'm going to go with the Ooh. Buccaneers. I love Baker Mayfield. If you didn't know that, I do. He has the biggest chip on his shoulder in the NFL. Do not do not try to fight me on that. But let's dive into the Eagles. I think anyone is. What are they? They're nothing. They're nothing. They have they're five and five. They're, they have lost five of the last six games. There is zero momentum going to the playoffs for them. The Eagles defense has looked terrible. Their pass defense is going to get absolutely demolished by Mike Evans and Baker Mayfield. Baker has been balling all season long when everyone was doubting him. Oh, why would the Buccaneers sign him for one year? All oh, this is going to be a rental. Blah blah blah. They might re-sign him. Who knows? I don't know what the negotiations are going to be, but I'm going to ride with the guy that has the massive sh- uh, chip on his shoulder since he uh, walked on to two colleges and won the Heisman. Yeah, you know, good good, good, good for Baker. I respect Love him. him. Seems like a fun guy. However, I'm going Eagles. Ooh. Minus three in this Ooh. game. And for the sole reason, this isn't a bet on the Eagles because Colby is not 100% incorrect in the fact that the Eagles have been really bad and garbage. And Monty's holding up a sign that says Eagles are frauds. Oh, okay. No, they're not frauds. The frauds are the Buccaneers. Is who the frauds are. You look at how who they I played. I did mean to add they don't the have many impressive December. wins. <laughs> their their wins are very unimpressive. They're, they they have played the Falcons twice, the Panthers twice, the Jaguars. They have really beat one impressive team and had only one impressive game over the last month, and that is on the road against the Packers. That's it. I'll you give them that one. That? that was fine. On that? I'll fist the, fight uh, you on that. <laughs> 
the Bucks have played the Eagles this year, so they already got tape. They already know what they got to do. They they're going to get the job done, and they're going to throw yeah, the ball yeah. down the field and take advantage of them. Let's go, Bucks! Yeah, I'm going to go Eagles minus three. Uh, we'll do the go to stadium bets for the fist fight of Colby and me. Nate, what do you like? Yeah, I don't really like either team. I couldn't make a case for either side, I guess, if I was forced to. I think the Eagles are a little bit more likely to win this game, but that's reflected in the odds. I bet the under here, uh, 43 and a half right now. I don't know, maybe you could wait and maybe some of the injury situations for both teams' offenses are positive and you could get a better number than what it is currently. But I just feel like both teams still have guys hurt in terms of Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown went out of the game in Week 18 against the Giants. And on the other side, Baker Mayfield, as tough as he is, and I give him credit for that, he's definitely not playing at 100%. And I feel like the Eagles' defense can get exploited through the air, but if Mayfield is not healthy, that they're going to have trouble doing that so like the under here monday night football and then whoever wins this game will have uh will i will probably bet against them next week it'll be fun we have our best bets for wild card weekend next on stadium bets welcome back to stadium bets no underdogs because nate is a cat guy now but colby we'll start with you what is your best bet of the weekend let's go back to jerry's world Jerry's world. And we're taking the over as my best bet. Come on. How could I not like this play? Cowboys are putting up almost 40 points per game at Jerry world. Ooh. Packers are putting up 25 points per game on the road. What else do I need to say? Jordan Love, he's going to be motivated for his first playoff game. The Cowboys need to prove themselves because of the Cowboys. Uh, take it away, Nate. Yeah, I go, go Rams. <laughs> Rams money line because I'm below 500 best bets. I know I talked about yes. Rams plus three in the other segment, but let's go money line and try to recover some of the uh, losses in the best bet segment this year. Nate, me and you, buddy, we're going to go Rams money line. This is a big moment. Rams money line. We're going for all the marbles. Underdog best bet of the week. Seven and one are the LA Rams since their bye week and their only losses on the road in overtime to the Ravens. Amon Ross St. Brown dyed his hair blue, which according to Colby is, uh, is not good. Yeah. Shame, shame. Um, and honestly, I think the Rams are just the better team. <clears throat> Stanford revenge game, anyone? You can go through all of the reasons why this L.A. Rams team should win and should at least cover on the road. I think we're going with that, gentlemen. Have a lovely wild card weekend. If you missed any of it, you can go on our stadium bets on Twitter.